नमस्कार दोस्तों गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू स्वास्थ्य में जयते वेलकम टू आकांक्षा डिजायर फॉर वेलनेस आज के स्वास्थ्य में जयते पे एक बहुत आ, क्या कहते एक बहुत ही स्पेशल गेस्ट डॉक्टर हमारे साथ जुड़ने वाले हैं और जिन्होंने समय निकाल के जो यहाँ हमारे देश में इंडिया में नहीं रहते इंडिया के बाहर रहते हैं फिर भी इन्होंने समय निकाला और इस शो में आए हैं तो वेलकम हम वेलकम करते हैं डॉक्टर सुरंजन घोषाल सो नमस्ते डॉक्टर वेलकम टू आकांक्षा डिजायर फॉर वेलनेस आई एम सो हैप्पी टू सी यू Uh, on this show, and I'm really thankful to you that you have taken out time from your busy schedule. I know you are so busy, but still you have taken out time and you have come on this show. Thank you so much. Uh, before we start with the question answer session, I would like to introduce Dr. Suranjan. Dr. Suranjan Ghoshal, FRCOG consultant, urogynecologist. Uh, doc and Dr. Ghoshal is currently working in Royal. Oldham Hospital, where uh, world's first IVF baby was born, and uh, Dr. Ghoshal has attained fellowship of Royal College of Gynecology in 2012 for his contribution to the specialty, and he is the current lead for urogynecology clinical audit and guidelines in the hospital. And uh, Dr. Ghoshal has been practicing in UK since 1993. as we all know that medical approaches in every country is slightly different uh, we must appreciate the fact that dr ghoshal has been practicing in uk since 1993 and some of his uh, opinion may differ compared to opinions that indian doctors hold and also dr ghoshal has been a friend and agreed to come uh, to our uh, to this show due to our long term relationship thanks a lot uh, doctor uh, yeah <laughs> so uh, i mean uh, the topic is very interesting and uh, since it is urogynecology related to women so i am very eager to know get answers to such some of the questions so to begin with because the topic is prolapse and to begin with first i would like to ask you that what is urogynecology sure and before i start with that uh, bhavani uh, thank you very much for your kind introduction Um, and inviting me to join you and your viewers today. So you want me to talk about what we do in the subspecialty of urogynecology. So um, yes. I think that today's session will help you and your viewers to understand what we do, what leads to some problems in, in the female reproductive health, and what we can do to prevent them and manage these conditions. So you ask me, what is urogynecology? So all of us would know what a gynecologist is. So in right. India, we used to call us, uh, or people used to call us, um, gynecologists. If they say the full thing, or they would say gyno, or they would say gynec. Uh, mm. But it is a gynecologist. So gynecologist is somebody, a medical specialist who deals with female reproductive organs, their mm -hmm. physiology, their anatomy, their functions, their problems, and their solutions. And when we talk about the female reproductive organs, we talk about uterus, the vagina, uh, the fallopian mm -hmm. tube, ovaries, mm -hmm. the external genitalia. Now, so that's the gynecologist, and we also yeah. do something called obstet. We also call ourselves obstetricians because obstetrics means to deal with the pregnancy and childbirth. So today we will only talk about gynecology and 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 in this context. So you say urogynecology. So urology is also another part of medical uh, science when a specialist deals with the renal system, and the renal system is consisting of, of course, the kidneys in the top. Then there are two thin tubes called ureter, which comes on each sides of our body, and that brings the urine that is being produced in the kidney to the bladder, to the urinary bladder that sits in the pelvis. And from the urinary bladder, a small tube called urethra that comes out. And connects to the exterior in the vaginal opening, and that brings the urine from the inside of the bladder to the outside when we are ready. So urogynecology deals with this common platform when the vagina is situated closely to the uh, to the bladder and the urethra and opening in the same place when there are problems in there. That's we the urogynecologists uh, deal with. Okay. So if we talk about the prolapse which is the first part of of the, the vaginal problems uh, in order to understand that 
we will need to think about the female pelvis. Now, when you say female pelvis, uh, I'm not talking about the as you, as you perceive it, as you see it from the outside. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the flesh and blood and skin and those. I'm talking about what's inside the pelvis. So inside the pelvis, there's a bony cage. Now, let me see if I can, uh, can you please share my screen there? Um, yeah. Can you see that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So you can see that that I put a picture of a of a bony pelvis in there, and mm -hmm. it, this is this is open in the top, and this is also open in the bottom. Mm -hmm. and as you understand, in the top we have the abdomen with all its contents. The many many feats of intestine then in the pelvis we have this uh, bladder in the front uterus in the middle and the rectum in the uh, behind so we need something at the bottom of this pelvic cage to hold mm -hmm. all of this about and that is served uh, by a muscular basket like structure at the bottom so i put a picture of a basket in there mm -hmm. and uh, and, and, and not that basket, but something similar is situated at the bottom of this pelvis. So I've shared a next image. Can you see that? Yeah, the next image I can't see. Uh, it's called a, um, on the top, it says superior view. Mm -hmm. So this is the first one, the basket one slide which you have showed. Yes, yes, yes. Visible. Can you see? It? Yes, yes. Perfect. Yeah. So, so that basket that was a representation. This is the actual picture of a human female pelvis from the top. Okay. So you can see this is a muscular layer sitting at the very bottom of this pelvis, which will hold all of the organs that is sitting above it in the pelvis and in the abdomen. And you can see this is pierced by three structures. I have an arrow that I'm moving. I hope you can see it and your viewers can see yes. it. So this is the urethra we talked about before. That is the urine tube that comes out of the bladder and brings mm -hmm. urine to the exterior. So that's the urethra that pierces the pelvic floor, this muscular layer. And this is in the middle is the vagina. Okay. And behind the vagina, we have the rectum. Now, this image is, is an image. It's not an exact representation. So mm -hmm. usually the rectum is slightly smaller than what it is here now. And and what I'm going to say, vagina is the biggest opening in this pelvic floor. So as you can see, if there's an opening in this structure, which is holding everything above it, mm -hmm. these openings are the weak points of the pelvic floor. Okay. And unless we are careful, these weak points may lead to problems. Okay. Now... The, the main support of the pelvic floor is this, is this structure. The uterus itself has got some additional support in the form of ligaments, etc. But the main support is still the uterus. So that's another image I have put in there just to put it in. Can you see that image with uh, various colors? The same, the second image which you are showing. What image do you see now? This is the yes, yes. Now I can see, right? Okay, I understand what, what I need to do here yeah. as well. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So it's the same thing that I was saying before. In the pelvis, above this uh, pelvic floor, we have the bladder in the front, the yellow structure, the uterus, mm -hmm. this, this uh, purple structure, leading to the vagina, which is the pink structure here, and this mm -hmm. reddish, pinkish thing behind is the rectum. So and okay. I'm going to put one more view of this uh, okay. so that we just own the scene. Can you see that one? I'm sure. You can see yes, that. yes, yes. So this is, imagine, so somebody has used a saw and cut a human body, a female human body, right in the middle, on the nose. Mm -hmm. And now we are looking at the right half of this human body. So okay. this is the front, this is the back. This is the front skin and the fat in there. This is mm -hmm. the back skin of the buttocks and the fat in the buttocks in there. The front pelvic okay. pelvic bone, the back pelvic bone, the coccyx mm -hmm. where we sit on. And between these two pelvic bones, as I said in the previous picture, mm -hmm. we have the uh, 
uh, pelvic floor, which is pierced by these three structures, the urethra, the vagina, okay. and the And okay. this is the external genitalia, which is at the very bottom of all of these organs. Okay, okay. So, once we know this, then let me talk about what is a vaginal prolapse. Okay. Uh, so, as I said before, this pelvic floor that is at the bottom of this pelvic pelvis, if it is weak, and if this balanced position of all the organs above it is, is weakened, then these organs can start to um, so drop down or protrude okay. through or descend to the vagina, which is the weakest point. So the bladder can bulge. Uh, can you still see? See this bladder here can bulge yeah. into the vagina. Can you still see the image? Yes, 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 I can see. Yeah. Yeah. And this um, rectum can bulge into the vagina, or this uterus okay. may start to come down in the vagina. Mm. And okay. in extreme cases, this this uterus may be completely out of the vagina and hanging down below okay. the entrance of the vagina. Okay. So these collectively, collectively are called the uterine or uterovaginal process. Okay. Now, when you talk about this, maybe we should talk about what may be the contributing factors to this. Not everyone uh, gets it. Yes. Uh. So, what we have seen, the biggest problem that we see, if you go, imagine that pelvic floor again. So, it's the muscular mm -hmm. structure is pierced by three things. And, and the biggest problem that we see that contributes to vision and prolapse in later life is mm -hmm. the pregnancy and childbirth. Okay. You can imagine a small uterus is filled with a baby, which will weigh between three kilograms to four kilograms, yes. sometimes yes. even five, six kilograms in this country of the United Kingdom. So these huge baby and 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 all the placentas, the fluids, everything in there presses on the pelvic floor and we can see. And not only see it does stop there, when the actual childbirth is happening, then you can imagine if I can go back to the first picture there. Can you see that mm. that picture? Yes, yes. Mm. So through this small opening, the vagina as it was before a childbirth, a baby needs to come out. So it has to disrupt these muscles and mm. their blood supply and their nerve supply. So as okay. a result, we get an weakening of all the all the support. Okay. So that's about okay. pregnancy and childbirth. And of course, the number of pregnancies we have. So suppose somebody mm. had one pregnancy. The assault to the to the pelvis is less. Somebody is having ten children. The assault will be more. Okay. But the size of the baby would be also uh -huh. important. Uh, the bigger mm. the baby, wider the gap that need that it needs to come through, uh, and that mm. the, the more the damage it will cause. Okay. Occasionally, if we do an instrumental delivery, the the space the baby needs to come out with the instrument it becomes about a centimeter or two more than that. So it it can also cause it more problem uh, to the pelvic floor. Oh, okay. So that is about the pelvic floor. Now, if you think about something else that can also cause this kind of problem. So anything that increases the pressure in the abdomen, that mm -hmm. will cause uh, cause these organs with the tendency to protrude through the vagina. Because that's the weakest okay. point. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is having chronic cough, so each time we cough, our intra-abdominal pressure increases. Somebody is mm -hmm. having all the time they need to open their bowels so they need to press increase the mm -hmm. of them. And that okay. will make these people more prone to have okay. tendency to have something prolapsing or coming through the vagina in later life okay, okay. Now, increased body weight that is very important because you can see so you, you know if we if we have higher body weight we tend to have a big belly mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. so this big belly contains all of these intestines, the uterus, ovaries, everything in there, vagina, everything in there. On top of that, I'm overweight, so I've got lots of fat yeah. in my belly. Yeah, yeah. And I'm the hardest one to move at the, you know, when I'm trying to lose the weight, as we all okay. know it. So, mm. But the problem in this context is, if this weight is very high, heavy body weight, then this also presses on this on this pelvic floor, which also okay. makes us more, more vulnerable for something mm. collapsing uh, in later life. Okay. So let me let me talk to you about various types of prolapses, and I'll yeah. show this. Picture. I don't know if you can see this. Mm -hmm. 
So the first picture here, can you see that? Yes, yes, yes. There is stages of prolapse, right at the top? Yes. Yeah. So that's yeah. what is at the beginning. Mm. Bladder in the front, uterus on the top, then the vagina, mm. the rectum mm. behind. This was our pelvic uh, floor. Okay. This area. Now, if we think the uterus is coming down as a result of the weakened pelvic floor or as a result of the chronic increased intra-abdominal mm. pressure, you can mm -hmm. see here it's come down a bit in the vagina. Yeah. But it's still within the vagina. So you call mm -hmm. this a stage one prolapse of uterus. Okay. See, this, this person, they would not be able to see something actually coming out. But they yeah. might have no symptoms at all. They might not even know that this is happening. Mm -hmm. Or they might have some mm -hmm. feeling like there's something coming down my vagina. Or there's a, like a dragging sensation or something similar. This, mm -hmm. If you see on this instance, this uterus has come right to the entrance of the vagina. Mm -hmm. yeah. come out of it as yet. We yeah. call this a stage 2 uterine descent. Okay. This picture you see here, it is not a true picture. You imagine this has come out slightly more than this. Mm -hmm. so it is protruding slightly from the opening mm -hmm. of the vagina. We call that a stage 3 uterine prolapse. And this one, again, that's a, not an actual picture. You imagine this is completely out of this uh, vagina. So this okay. is a this is a picture of a stage three uterine prolapse. Okay. Now, it's mm -hmm. completely out of the vagina and hanging here outside the entrance of the vagina. We call that okay. a stage four uterine prolapse, or mm -hmm. procedentia. And you can imagine okay. at that point, this vagina will be completely inverted, coming you know upside down. Mm -hmm. So that is an extreme, uh, advanced form of uterine prolapse. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. I will share this screen as well. Mm -hmm. Again, similar to before, normal anatomy, bladder in the front with urethra, mm -hmm. uterus, vagina, and rectum behind, and pelvic floor at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So you see here what is happening. It is the anterior compartment of the pelvic floor that is the weak, weakened part. Mm -hmm. So what is happening here, before the uterus is coming down, this bladder part, which is supported by the vagina or the pelvic floor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. has to come down here, mm -hmm. protruding inside the vagina. Mm -hmm. So we call this a bladder prolapse in the vagina or a okay. cystocil. Cysto means blood. Uh -huh. If you look at this picture, similarly, if the mm -hmm. posterior compartment, posterior means the back compartment of the vagina or the pelvic okay. floor is weakened, then mm -hmm. the rectum may start to bulge into the vagina. And we call this a rectocyte. Okay. Mm -hmm. so this is an example where you can see uterus has come out of the entrance. It's a stage yeah. three uterine prolapse. Mm -hmm. And suppose somebody had a hysterectomy, you might ask me. So what happens mm -hmm. in those cases? Who doesn't have a uterus at all? Even in that case, the vagina still needs to be supported uh, by all these structures. And if the support is not there, or if it is poor, then the top of the vagina, imagine here, this uterus is gone from here. And we have, I have stitched it here, closing the vagina like a, like a vault, like a tent. So in those cases, if the support is not very good, then that might start to come down and out like here. So the vagina has become upside down. We call that a prolapse of the vaginal vault. Okay. So you might now wonder what might be the symptoms of this. Yes, yeah, so symptoms. Looking at this here, you might think that, okay, at the beginning, if it is only a small, so small part of uterus is coming down, this picture here, mm -hmm. you know, don't know if you can see it here. If a small yeah. part of uterus is coming down in the vagina, there may be no symptoms at all. Mm -hmm. And the majority, to be honest with you, the majority of women who are there, who, who has got some kind of genital prolapse, are not aware of what is happening with them. Or they might have some heaviness, mm. some dragging sensation, some pulling. Or they okay. might think, come to me and tell me that I feel, doctor, that something is coming down or out of the okay. vagina. I feel okay. or see like a ball or a lump that is coming out of the entrance of my vagina. Okay. If you think of that picture there next to it, when the bladder has come down, not the uterus, because mm. 
because we need this blood in line with the urethra for it to empty properly okay uh. if this part falls below the urethra then when i'm trying when this girl is trying to empty her bladder when she is passing urine mm -hmm. then she may able to empty this part very well mm -hmm. so she might tell me that i feel something is coming down and mm -hmm. i find it difficult to pass urine mm -hmm. and this might lead so so suppose in the bladder we have 400 milliliters of urine and okay. she is managing with this only 300 mils of this or 250 okay. mils of this. so that means when the kidney is producing more urine the bladder is getting full again sooner than yeah. what it would have been if the bladder was completely empty so then okay. she might need to go to pass urine more often than she used mm -hmm. to do before okay similarly if it is a posterior wall prolapse, back wall prolapse, or a rectal wall prolapse in the vagina, or rectocele as we call it, mm -hmm. then these women, these girls might have a problem of emptying their bowel motions completely. Okay, okay. Sometimes they come to me and tell me, doctor, you know, I have this symptom and I have to actually physically, with using my fingers, push this up before okay. I can empty my bladder or before I can empty my bowel motion. Okay. You also imagine the vagina before a childbirth, opening of the vagina is, is say that is the normal one. So between the mm -hmm. opening of the vagina and opening of the back passage, the, the rectum, is a, is a part of tissue. We call that perineum. Mm -hmm. You can imagine the most, although the vagina stretches, the opening stretches during the childbirth, but, but they mm -hmm. become more prone to tearing. Mm -hmm. And if this perineum mm -hmm. gets torn during the childbirth, then that will lead to opening of the vagina along with this loose support of the vagina. And this okay. may lead to a loss of sensation due to sexual okay. interest. Uh -huh. Furthermore, okay. if there's a bulge in the vagina, uterus has come down or the sister seal, the rectus seal is, is occupying the space in the vagina, there might be mm -hmm. some discomfort or, 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 or pain during intercourse. Okay, okay. Very commonly, we hear people telling that backache is a symptom of vaginal or uterine prolapse. Now, okay. when you talk about it, you need to be careful. Backache mm -hmm. in 90% of the cases, if not more than that, maybe 95% of cases, is due to some problem in the back, not because of a prolapse. But in a okay. small number of cases, yes, backache may be due to a uterus trying to come down. When it has come down significantly, it would not mm. cause any back anymore, probably. Mm. But at least in the first part, it might might cause some backache towards the end of the day. Why it towards the end of the day? Because we are primates, we stand on our two legs, and that uh -huh. makes us very vulnerable. So we don't see mm. prolapses very often to, to cows or, or, or dogs no. or horses because they are on no. their fours. Four, because yeah. we are standing erect and because we have this hole at the bottom of the pelvis and the people mm -hmm. and the other, the, 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 there's a gravitational pull that's pulling everything down. Mm. So these effects, when we lie down at the end of the day, all of mm -hmm. these that is down tends to go up a bit more and the symptoms yeah. get better. Mm -hmm. In the morning, we wake up from sleep, we stand on our feet and, and then mm -hmm. we are on our feet. Out the day, we get on the daily day to the activities, we raise our inter abdominal pressure, we lift weight, etc. All of these. So, towards mm -hmm. the end of the day, these girls often tell me I get more of these symptoms coming. Yeah, okay. This okay. is how patients with prolapse might present to us. Okay, okay. If so, we talk about sorry, go on. Yeah, no, uh. Yeah, uh, Dr. Suranjan, can you hear me? So we talked about why it happens. We talked about the symptoms. Maybe the next thing we can talk about is how we can manage them. Manage. Yeah. Yeah. So if we want to talk about management, so yeah. then we need to look at the symptoms. Mm -hmm. If somebody has got no symptoms whatsoever, yeah. maybe don't need to manage anything. Yeah. However, if if we and, and this can be a part in a, a number of cases when it is very mild prolapse, mm -hmm. fast prolapse, not much symptoms in there. And I've examined this girl for something else and I've seen this. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes my duty to tell her that okay, you have some some kind of weakness in there. 
so be careful and do something so that it doesn't progress further to cause you mm -hmm. trouble but they may not need anything more than that at that point mm -hmm. whatever we do we need to reach an exact diagnosis to see okay. what is happening so that we can okay. make an individualized management plan for example if somebody comes to me who is 23 years of age had one child but before and that has made led to some problem of prolapse in the vagina okay so mm -hmm. i do not want to do something you know a major surgery for her at that age because she still has her family to complete mm -hmm. and each time she has a pregnancy whatever i have done will start to become undone okay that's why it is important to individualize our management mm -hmm. plan for some no treatment would be an option for okay. some we would talk about some conservative management okay those who are who are, uh, who, are who has got a lesser degree of prolapse Okay. For those who have more degree of prolapse, moderate prolapse or severe prolapse, we will do something called the pessary treatment or surgical treatment. Okay. Now, if we talk about conservative management, then uh -huh. firstly, we need to avoid those contributing factors. So we need to avoid chronic okay. cough, avoid chronic constipation, we need uh -huh. to stop lifting heavy weight regularly. Okay. And if we are overweight, we need to reduce uh -huh. our weight so that the pressure on the pelvic floor at the bottom becomes uh -huh. less. Okay. So these, all of these will help A, to reduce our symptoms, B, to reduce the chance of this minor degree of prolapse progressing to more major degrees. Uh -huh. In, on top of that, the most important structure we said at the beginning is the support offered by the pelvic floor. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, Pelvic floor is a muscle. So mm -hmm. we to think of something that can increase the strength of this muscle in the pelvic mm -hmm. so that they can do their function and keep all of these okay. organs in their, their proper oh. respective place. Okay. So this is known as pelvic floor muscle training. Okay. Now, okay. muscles for those muscles that are on the outside, for example, those muscles um, uh, which are on our um, uh, say, for example, biceps. So I can pick up a, um, a dumbbell or barbell or something, and mm -hmm. I, I can do the. Yeah. Difficult uh -huh. to because I cannot see the muscles in the inside my pelvis. It's difficult uh -huh. to know what to do with them. Uh -huh. So, what in this context, what it is, what would be useful to know is uh, is to remember what pierces the vagina. Uh -huh. So, urethra pierces the vagina. Uh -huh. Sorry, urethra pierces the pelvic floor, vagina uh -huh. pierces the pelvic floor, and the rectum pierces the pelvic floor. Right? Okay. Uh -huh. So imagine somebody is passing urine. Uh -huh. If I ask her to stop the flow of the urine in mid flow, she will uh -huh. need to do something in, in their body. She will need to contract these muscles in the pelvic floor uh -huh. so that uh -huh. while it is passing the pelvic floor, it is squeezed and the uh -huh. urine stops. So that is a good okay. technique for me to tell my patients that try this okay. at home to learn what to do. Okay. But okay. You, so that I'm not asking them to do this if, every time they are passing urine. I'm asking mm -hmm. them to learn the technique to see which muscles to engage okay. when you're doing this. And once okay. you know that, then you do these exercises regularly. You can, okay. I can also tell them, that imagine there's something in the vagina and you're trying okay. to squeeze this with the muscles in okay. the vagina. Okay. Same thing. Or you're trying to open your bowels and you want to stop the bowel motions in, in, in the midway. Okay. So once they learn that, what you advise them to do is to do three sets of muscle contractions in a day. Okay. okay. Instead, in each set, there should be 10 contractions. The 10 okay. contractions of the pelvic floor muscles. And okay. each contraction should last for 10 seconds. So what you say okay. to them? Okay, you know what to do, you know how to contract these muscles. So you mm -hmm. start by contracting and then mm -hmm. count it slowly and then mm -hmm. releasing. Then okay. again contracting, count to 10 slowly and releasing. And in that okay. way, you do 10 contractions first thing in the mm -hmm. morning, maybe, 10 contractions in midday, and 10 contractions in the, at the end of the day. Okay, okay, okay. Now there are some devices available for these, definitely mm -hmm. for the market. Uh, we we see something called a feminine cone. It looks like a tampon. So they come same size of a tampon, 
plastic and there are some weights inside them. So then, then okay. they become three or four sizes, different weights, the lowest weight to the highest. So what okay. what we tell our patients use the tamp use this femina cone, this 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 plastic tampon like thing, keep it in the vagina, and okay. then try to retain it in the vagina by contracting those muscles of your pelvis. Okay. okay. And you will keep use it in in the vagina whole day. Nobody would know what you are doing, but you will be doing okay. it. Uh, throughout the day and improving the muscle muscle tone and once you are happy with the lowest weight go up gradually with the higher weight to improve the muscle tone okay. okay so this technique will help with the genital prolapse it will also help with the urinary incontinence both okay. especially with the physical activity related urine incontinence leakage and it will also by improving the pelvic floor muscles Revive okay. the sexual health. Hmm. Finally, you will see a bit later on that one of the management plan would be to do a surgical treatment for the prolapse. Okay. Now, if you think of it, a surgery does not remove the cause that was causing the prolapse in the first instance. Surgery yeah. is not improving the muscle tone. Hmm. Surgery is not avoiding chronic cough. Surgery is not avoiding hmm. chronic constipation. Surgery is not reducing the body weight that's pressing on this pelvic floor. So, because of these reasons, we get a very high degree of recurrence after surgical repair. And this may reach up to 40%. So, this okay. is why this pelvic floor muscle training would be very important. And I was thinking, Bhavani, I mean, I know you look after well, well being in a holistic way. And you, I don't know if you have access to specialist physiotherapist because these these needs to be given or trained by either a gynecologist who know who a passion so our ordinary day-to-day -day physiotherapist that we see around us which deals with muscles and bones and joints etc they are msk physiotherapy they are musculoskeletal physiotherapy they are not the best people to deal with the pelvic floor but I have seen uh, the mention of specialist pelvic floor physiotherapist. There's a, somebody called Sharma. I've seen. I'm uh -huh. sure they are around in India as well. And for our Indian uh, Indian uh, in audience, uh, I'm sure you will be able to uh, source some of them if they need one to help them in various stages of of, of their uh, pelvic floor muscle training. Okay, okay. So, um, I'm going to the next part, uh, Bhavani, which is uh, the management for those conditions of prolapse which are more than minor, so moderate or severe prolapses. Moderate, yeah, okay, okay. So, so these, what we do for these cases, we think about conservative management, non surgical management, or we think about surgical management. Now, surgery, of course, is a is a major surgery. It carries risks, complications, chance of recurrence, etc. If the if the person wishes, if she wishes to avoid surgery in the first place, or if the prolapse is not very uh, major, or if it's a pregnancy and that is coming at the same time with the prolapse symptoms, we will use vaginal patients. Now, okay. I don't know if you can see this slide. Is that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So these are examples of various specialties. Specialties are made of soft plastic, squeezable mm -hmm. plastic. And some of these, we call these, this looks like a ring or a bangle. We call them mm -hmm. ring specialties. So these we use for minor to moderate degree of uh, vaginal prolapse. Mm -hmm. What do you do? We put them, place them inside the vagina. So okay. you can see one is placed here above the pelvic floor so that it can support this prolapsing uterus or the part of the bladder, etc. above mm -hmm. the pelvic floor. So it okay. does the same job what the surgery will do without mm -hmm. the surgical uh, risks. Mm -hmm. Now these kind of ring pessaries, as you can see, they do not take up much space. Uh -huh. So with these in situ, with these in place, sexual function can be preserved. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, these, once we fit the scene, we cannot leave them in here forever. 
So okay. we need to take them out and put them back in again once every six months or so. Okay. We can use one pessary that we buy for up to two to four years. So we take them out, wash them, clean them, wash them with antiseptics and put them back in again and make, keep using them for about two to four years. Okay. It is recommended that we take them out regularly at least once every six months. Oh, oh. So with the pessaries, we can keep preserve sexual function. But if the prolapse is a bit something more than moderate, more severe okay. degree, or if mm -hmm. the full muscles are not very strong to keep it in, oh. then uh -huh. they use something like a shelf pessary, which I'm putting my arrow around. Uh -huh. As you can see, this takes a bit more space. Uh -huh. So it holds because it takes more space in the vagina. It can only uh -huh. be used for women who are not sexually active. Okay. Uh, having said that, I so as you can see, I as a gynecologist or a gynecologist will put this in and take them out. So if I can do it, somebody else can do it as well. And it is quite common practice in at least in the United States for the patients to learn the technique of doing this. And what they then do, they put that pessary in the vagina the first thing they wake up in the morning. So then throughout the day, this helps them with their symptoms. And when they go to bed at the end of the day and go to sleep or near in, in almost almost going to sleep, they take it out so that they don't keep it in, in the vagina for a prolonged period of time. In that way, of course, you know, it is like, like putting these things in your eye. Like a, a cleanse this kind of thing. So, of course, when they're taken out, they need to be um, clean and, and, and kept um, uh, proper. So, that would be the um, pessary treatment. Can you hear me, Babani? I don't see any more there on the screen. I don't know if you're still there, but it looks like it is still continuing, so I'll continue. So this leads me to the last part of my uh, of, of our talk today, which is known as uh, surgical management. Are you messaging me? Let me see. Oh, you said there's a power cut trying to connect with my data card. So it is continuing on, on my side. So I don't know if it is recording, if the others can see it, so I'll continue for this. But if you come back, I can go back to it again. So I was talking about surgical management uh, at the end of this capture for the end of, of, of our uh, talk today. So if nothing is working, or if some, uh, some of my patients is asking for me to provide them with a surgical solution to their problem, then we will opt for surgery. And there are the conventional surgeries, uh, say, for example, for a bulge in the bladder, that is a cystocele, we can do a cystocele repair or an anterior colporaphy. Colpo means vagina. For a bulge on the back wall of the vagina, we call that a rectal bulge. We can do a rectocele repair or a posterior colporaphy. If the perineum is torn with a big, leaving a big gaping perineum, we can do a perineoraphy. If the uterus is coming down, we can do a vaginal hysterectomy. If there's no uterus, just that the vagina is coming down from its top, we can do something called a sacrospinous fixation. Hello, Babari. Welcome. You know. Yeah, there was some unstable internet connection. That was the reason. Yeah. Yeah. So on my side, it was still going on, and it was saying yeah. still saying live. I don't no, know if the viewers have. So I continued talking. I did get your message, and I knew you had a power card. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know whether the viewers could still see it, but anyway, I'm, I'll go back to the beginning. So I think what it was the first thing that you heard? Me talking about the pessaries, isn't it? Like this, yeah, yeah. Pessaries, we talked about the ring pessaries, we talked about the stress pessaries, and the ring pessaries are used for those who has got in a lesser symptom. And 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 the lower part of this, uh, uh, so somebody just sent a message. I think. Uh, no yeah, 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 yeah. Read it completely. Yeah. Anyway, I will I will yeah. complete this, this one because you are here now, so that we don't take much much of the time. 
So if, if it is not controlled by a ring, ring pessary, you can use a shelf pessary uh, mm -hmm. for these kind of problems. And the problem with the shelf is that it takes up more space. So if somebody is sexually active, then that is not the ideal solution. for mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You need to be taken out at least once every six months and I can train my patients to do it themselves. And in that okay. case, they can do it every day even. So they don't have to keep it in, the, in their body uh, okay. throughout the 24 hours. They can put it in the morning, use it throughout the day for their symptom relief. And then at mm -hmm. the end of the day, they can take it out when they go to bed. So that is mm -hmm. not in their body all the time, like um, a contact lens that you put put on the eyes. Okay. 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 Uh, so now we'll talk about the surgical management. So if yeah. the patient wants a surgical management, if the other modalities have not been successful, or mm -hmm. if they're so bad that a facility cannot stay in, in those cases, I can we can offer surgical management. Okay. Surgical. So if it is a bladder that's bulging, cystocele, we can do a cystocele repair, or we call anterior colporaphy. Colpo means vagina. So anterior means front, front, vagina, bulge repair. If it is the rectum that is bulging in the vagina, we call it rectocele repair. If it is the torn perineum, big vaginal opening, we, we can do a perineography, perineal repair, reconstruction. If it is uterus coming down, we can do what we call a vaginal hysterectomy. So remove the uterus. If it is, okay. if somebody had a history. coming upside down, causing a wall prolapse or vaginal prolapse, then we can do something called the sacrospinous fixation when we fix the vagina to a ligament inside the pelvis. And finally, for those group of women who are very elderly, for example, they're very high risk for surgery or anesthesia. So eight year old. And, and if we give them anesthesia, do a large surgery, major surgery, they might die on the table, those kind of patients. For those, what we can do is something called Colpoclesis. Colpo means vagina and clesis means closure. So we can close the vagina, leaving two tiny gaps on the sides for any discharge to come. So that's the surgical management conventional. Now, nowadays, for the last 10 years or so, we are doing lots of newer techniques where, where instead of taking the whole, whole uterus out, we're leaving them in and attaching them, att attaching the uterus to the back of the pelvis, to the sacrum. So we call this sacro, sacrum, hystero, uterus, pexy repair. So you use a mesh to attach it to the sacrum on the back and the uterus in the front. Or sacro, colpo, pexy, between the sacrum and the vault of the vagina. So these are very good. This keeps the uterus in place, especially important for those who want to preserve their uterine function. Okay. This can be used. Only problem with them is that uh, with use of mesh inside the in, inside the abdominal cavity, although these are used for many reasons, for, for surgeons they use mesh all the time. However, in gynecological context, use of mesh in uh, in in the in, in the peritoneal cavity, in abdominal cavity, unless it is done in a controlled manner, if it is done you know randomly every, for everybody, we keep doing it, then we'll we will end up we might end up with lots of complications. So that to be done after um, after considering all the options. Okay. So okay. that was my talk. Yeah. Maybe I will do a key message for our viewers before I stop. And yeah. if there's any questions in the meantime, I'll address yeah. them from you, from any, anybody else. So what we talked about is what is urogynecology? What are prolapses? Mm -hmm. We did not deal with all of urogynecology. We didn't deal with incontinence, which is a major part of the urogynecology. But if, we, if it is needed, if you want it to be, maybe at some other point we can talk about that uh, later on. But today we talk about how it affects the, the pelvic floor is the most important part of the uh, of the female pelvis in, in, in place. How improving how improving their uh, um, how how improving this pelvic floor will prevent things progressing from from uh, from minor to more major issues how we can treat them with these and surgeries most important thing is this the pelvic floor is within our body the more we keep uh, care of you know take, take care of that the better we'll be served okay 
So, Dr. Suranjan, I mean, uh, the, the very detailed explanation you have given and I'm very thankful to you because the audience have come to know, you know, there are so many things which you have explained along with the pictures. So that visual thing becomes, you know, I mean, I can see the comments also very, very informative. I mean, I'm really thankful for this informative session. Uh, I mean, uh, it's, I mean uh, thank you so much for taking out time and uh, explaining in so detail because I never expected that it's going to be in such a detail and a lot of things we all understood, those who, have, who are there who have joined us. So thank you so much, Dr. Suranjan, and I definitely look forward, you know, to meet you again, uh, maybe, you know, sometime later, next month or after that with some other topic, you know, and uh, uh, thank you so much. I think there was a question there. Um, somebody asked about uh, and prolapse or something or C-section. What was that? I'll just see, while watching some this. The que this was the question, okay. I think. This is from a... This is from... leads to... What are you? Got no, I won't say that. This... Hysterectomy does not lead to cystic. Cystocyl is part of the mm -hmm. prolapse. Uh, if that is happening, okay. then you need to repair the cystocyl. Hysterectomy as such would not lead to cystocyl, no. Mm -hmm. The cystocyl is the bulge of the, of the blood into the vagina. Mm -hmm. So that is not happening because of hysterectomy. Does it make any sense? But the, the, if, if somebody has got a weakened pelvic floor, then coming, then the bladder might come through the vaginal opening uh, and cause a cystocyl. But doing a hysterectomy as such would not cause a cystocyl. There are certain surgeries which can cause it though. Uh, but that will be a bigger talk. <laughs> but no, it's the short answer to a question. Hysterectomy per se would not cause a cystocyl. But if somebody has a cystocyl, if it is not bad enough, then doing pelvic floor exercise would be a good thing to start with. And not only for the that, for all women amongst us, we not only women, all men as well. Our pelvic floor is the only structure that keeps everything in place. Think of that bone, think of that structure. And because we are primates standing on the two legs, we need to keep that health of that pelvic floor good, especially for women, because there are three openings in there, as opposed to us, only, only one opening, the men's. So it is important to do, to learn those and continue with them throughout uh, the life. It's very important. Oh, there's another question uh, there. Does it mean the women should have C-section and not normal delivery? I don't think so. No, I won't say that. Yes, um, if you have a vaginal childbirth, that makes you more, that makes the pelvic floor to be weakened and that leads you more uh, towards developing these kind of problems in, in later life. But I would not recommend people having C-section just because of this. But what we see yeah. that for those women who underwent C-sections and not too many of them because that has got its own problem, C-section and not deliveries to the vagina, they have less chance of prolapse or urine incontinence in later life. But for that, I would not recommend they go and have a C-section. But it is, it is true in that way. That yes, if you have a C-section, your chance of developing these are less than if you have a vaginal delivery. Even a pregnancy can, as I said before, a pregnancy can put pressure. Even a pregnancy can can damage the pelvic floor, but childbirth damages it more. That's for sure. Okay, okay. So, yes, so doctor, yeah, doctor Suren, thank you so much. I mean, there was little a network issue from my side, so a few points I could not hear, but definitely, yeah. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for uh, giving the, for this informative session and everybody those who have joined you know they are thanking you for this uh, beautiful lovely session with full of information so mm -hmm. i will catch up some other time with some other topic and uh, thanks a lot thank you so much for joining here yeah, thank you and, and and thank you for uh, asking me to uh, talk yeah. to you and i hope somebody have listened to it or especially the females in this group it has helped them to understand their anatomy and the physiology. Hopefully, it will help them in future. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, 
So I will leave the studio now and I'll leave it to you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, doctor. Take bye. care. Bye. Yeah, bye. bye.